This is Miles. And Miles has separation anxiety and he likes to escape the house. He's busted out of the house a couple times. And he's only been here about a month and a half. Um, I think the first time was in the second day that he was here. Um, the guardians just really haven't left him home alone. They've had somebody here with him to supervise. Um, and, this, and the guardians have been watching a lot of my videos Normally what I would be doing in this video is teaching you how to teach your dog to stay. The guardians have already watched those videos and are already starting to apply those techniques. Uh, and so I'm gonna kind of riff on those and this is really gonna be not so much a demonstration of me just kind of discussing. So separation anxiety is essentially a panic attack that the dog goes through when they're left alone. Some dogs have to be with a specific person or just anyone. So I think in his case, it's just anyone. He's just comfortable. Now he's a rescue dog, so I think he's a doodle. The guardians didn't know what he is, but I'm pretty sure he's just a doodle. He has some telltale signs that he was a puppy, puppy mill. Uh, but basically what we're gonna do is the guardians have now taught him to stay for up to five minutes for duration. And my next step is to start doing for distance. Now when we do it for distance, at first we're gonna put him in a stay. Does he have a release word, by the way? Release. Okay, awesome. Don't wanna use the word, okay. So basically I'm gonna put him in a stay and I'll go ahead and I'll just kind of pant him, or I'll do it a little bit here. Stay. Stay. So now I'm going to go, and this would be something you have to work up to this, but stay. Stay. And when we get done, drop a tree over there and say release. Um, now what I want to do is I only I actually stay out of sight longer than I normally would. The first time you step out of sight is just for one second and then you immediately come back and then come back up here and give them a treat and step back again. Usually when I get to the point where I'm actually doing uh, a good drummer outside, uh, normally when I get to the point where I'm doing this, I don't want to start stepping out of sight until I'm achieved about 15 feet away from the dog in a stay position and with them and him coming back. Um, and so then what I do is I, I move out for about 15 feet and I step just right outside of his reach and then come back and I give him a treat. Next time I go stay out of his reach for uh, his sight for two seconds, then three seconds. And then you kind of play by, go by your dog's iteration. You don't always have to go one second at a time, but you don't, going from one second at a time up to five minutes is gonna take you a long time. So once you get up to like 20 seconds, you might go 20 to 25 seconds. But if at 24 seconds he gets up and starts moving away, that he's telling you I need to back up and practice the previous step. The idea is to get to the point where he can stay out of sight for like up to 15 minutes. What we would do then at that point is put him in a stay, maybe in the bedroom, then we come out here and watch some Dodgers. Or we come out here and we have dinner or whatever it is. Dinner would be a little bit more advanced. The idea is we want to get to the point where we're helping him practice being alone for progressively longer and longer periods of time. Um, most dogs with separation anxiety, they go from 100% access to humans to zero. He's what we call a Velcro dog. He follows his, his guardians to the bathroom. Uh, he has to be touching them if they're sitting on the floor watching TV. A lot of times the dog will sit on your foot so they can feel if you try to move and they wake up and they come with you. Um, it's an insecurity. Now, some things you can do for dogs with separation anxiety is to teach them new tricks and commands that helps boost their self-esteem and their confidence. So one of the things I'd like the guardians to do is go to YouTube, look for easy dog training to, uh, tricks. And there's all these trainers want to get a TV show, so they'll show you how to know all the ins and outs of the trick. Make sure it's pretty easy. And then each week, maybe one week, Guardian A on Sunday teaches him how to roll over. Next week, Guardian B teaches him bang your dead. Those two should be kind of taught one after the other, kind of <laughs> licked. Um, and it can be really simple ones. Like one of the things I do is I'll teach my dog what I call patrol, which is to do a circle around me. So if the dog is standing, I put the treat against the dog's nose, lead it over here, transfer it to my other arm, and the dog's following it, and I put him in a sit, and they give him a treat and say, patrol. So that all it is is walking around me. If you ever watch like America's Got Talent, those dogs that are like walking through the people's legs, figure eights, that's how they teach that. They just first teach that, and then they do it around the leg. Um, that's super duper simple. And now you have a way to redirect your dog's sense. You say, patrol, the dog comes over and does a circle and then sits in front of you. Really easy to teach, but now it's a new skill for him to have. Um, I'd like to have him, see him with at least 10 commands that he knows. Preferably some of them that incorporate some control, like balancing a treat on his nose. Uh, I know a dog trainer that teaches their dog to put a hot dog in the dog's mouth and it can't eat it, it has to just hold the hot dog. It takes a lot of control, that's more advanced. Um, but even just waiting for it to get a treat that's there, that we want him to practice self-control, um, but also boost his self-esteem. Now, um, when dogs have separation anxiety, a lot of times there are triggers that are associated with it. 
I don't think the guardians here have gotten to this, but typically when we leave, we have kind of a departure ritual. We sit in a certain chair, we put our shoes on. We grab our car keys from over here. We get our sunglasses from over there. We make sure we grab our, uh, our, our iPhone and the earbuds and our, you know, all the rest of this different stuff. The dog starts seeing all these things happen and then dogs go through repetition and consistency and good timing. Well, if every time I see the humans get up, they sit here, they put their shoes on, they grabs this, grabs that, oh, these are, these are, this is a litany of things that happen right before they're about to leave. So the dog starts getting worked up and they start breathing heavy and they're getting apprehensive and they're getting anxious and then by the time you leave, they're already in a frenzy. So one of the things we like to do is teach dogs, to, we desensitize them. So keys are one of the things which it typically is, I don't think it is for him because he hasn't been here long enough in the way the guards have done it, but I would basically You're just gonna pick it up and put it down or pick it up and take a step and then put it back down. So what we wanna do is we wanna break the association. When I pick up my keys, it doesn't always mean I'm leaving. When I sit here and put my shoes on, it doesn't mean I'm leaving. So if you do have a dog with separation anxiety and you notice your dog starts getting anxious on your, as you're preparing to leave, you wanna recreate that situation. And this is something I talked to the guardians off camera about, is as a behaviorist, I recreate situations in the easiest capacity possible and help the dog practice how I wanna behave each step along the way. Now in this case, we don't want the way we want to behave is not to freak out. And so teaching, getting him used to the keys picking up and down or whatever it is without me leaving helps him feel more comfortable. Now the Guardians, because he is a, an escape artist and we live kind of near a busy street here, I have talked about getting a kennel, but they're worried that they just throw him in the kennel and he's gonna hurt himself, which a lot of dogs do because people don't kennel train their dogs. So I have videos on kennel training on my website. If I get a link one on here, let me know and I can kind of uh, add one to the write up. Uh, this will be on, on my website, but uh, what are the, uh, I'll go through some of the tricks that I do. So I like I prefer a wire kennel, not a plastic kennel. They just break down a, little, uh, a lot easier. Um, and then basically um, make sure that he's tall, big enough for him to stand up in without stooping down, and he should be able to stand and lay down completely without having to be curled up. If it's too small of a kennel, that's inhumane. Also, dogs should not be left in a kennel for longer than four hours. They will get cortisol in their blood. I don't care if it's a puppy or an adult longer than four hours is, is inappropriate. Um, so I want to create a longing for him to want to go in the kennel. So one of the things I do is first of all, come up with a name for the kennel, maybe we call it a dugout. So what we do is we toss a treat in the kennel, kind of the same way I've shown the guardians for this dog bed, and we finally have him laying down here, is I throw the kennel in the dog bed, on the, in the kennel, he goes in and licks it up, and I would say the word palace, or, what, or dugout in this case. Um, and then he gets to leave, and then I toss another one in there. And if you won't go in the kennel, put it right, if this is the kennel right here, put it right outside the kennel. Comes and gets it. After you've come in several times and gotten it, then put one right inside the kennel. He just has to stick his head in the end and have to walk in and bread, gradually breadcrumb until he has to go all the way in the kennel in the back to get it. And each time he licks it up and he's standing at least one paw in the kennel or saying the command word, uh, dug out. Um, the next stage is, if he, is to leave treats in there when he's out in the backyard farting around. He comes in, he's like, I smell chicken liver. And don't point it out, let him fight it on his own. When he goes in there, say the word palace. And if he gets it without you saying it, that's okay. Because uh, it was still a positive reinforcer. Now the next step I usually do is I'll take a handful of treats, let the dog see me do it, and I throw them in the kennel, and I close the door of the kennel on the outside, with the dog on the outside of the kennel. Now the dog's like pawing at the kennel. Let me in there, man, I want to get all that loot. Well, make him work for it for a minute or so, and then open it up, let him go in, when he licks each one up, say the word dugout. And after, if you do this enough, after a while the dog will start kind of hanging out in there. Now, anytime the dog goes in there on his own without any treats present, make sure you go over and give him a treat um, so that he gets one for, he's being rewarded for going in there. Now, the guardians have a very unusual place to keep his dog toys, which actually prevented him from getting into it. So I mentioned they should put it on the floor. I prefer a wire mesh basket that's metal, so the dogs won't chew on it, but it can still hold everything. And, and at the end of every day, pick up all the toys and put them back in there. So um, I usually like to have a dog to have at least 20 different toys. And so I'm guessing the way that the guardians are looking at each other right now off camera that they don't have that many toys. So your dog can chew on what you provide or what they decide and what they decide will be much more expensive than what you will buy on Chewy or Amazon, which are the two places I like to go. You wanna get a variety, you wanna get some tug toys like ropes, um, you can get some plushy toys unless he destroys them, you can maybe stuffless toys. Um, I like to get puzzles like uh, Omega Treat Ball, um, some of the puzzles that you slide it and there's a little reservoir that some of the kibbles down there. You can get Kongs, fill them up with peanut butter. Those are very good. Um, also antlers, uh, deer antlers or elk antlers. Those are more expensive, but they really like them. Uh, water buffalo horn is one of my favorites. I get that I have at least one of those for every place I have dogs. 
Um, let me see, also real bones. And the nylon bones, make sure they're not always the cartoon looking bone. I have one that's a forearm. I have one that looks like a donut. I have one that looks like a letter Y. You can get all these different shapes and different flavors as well. Bacon, uh, cheese, um, barbecue, uh, chicken, but chicken tastes like everything. Um, anyways, <laughs> so you want to get a variety of all these dog toys. And what I would do is order like hundred bucks of them on Amazon, but instead of just giving them to them all at once, put one a day into the kennel. So every time you in the kennel, not only are treats there, now like these cool toys are in there as well. Thank you, now I can sit get off my knees, otherwise I won't be able to get up. So, um, so every time I go in the kennel, I get a treat or there, I find a new toy, I'm gonna start having more of a reason to hang out in here. Now something else I do is I get a bully stick um, and bully sticks are dried bull's penises. I actually have some of here, I believe. Um, yes, I do, right here. So what I would do is get a bully stick like this, which you can see he's all about the bully stick, and just basically uh, drill a hole through the end of it, zip it, and put it at the end of the, in the inside the kennel, in the bottom, where the dog can only chew on it while he's inside the kennel. And so it has, make sure the zip's a little bit long so he has a little bit of movement that he can move around a little bit, but then he'll go in the kennel and he's in the kennel chewing on the bully stick. There we go. And the idea is for the kennel, we want the dog to practice being in the kennel in a calm and balanced state of mind. Most people just put the dog in the kennel, lock it, and then they leave. So the kennel represents A, I'm being restrained, and B, my humans are abandoning me. Well now, every time I go in the kennel, I get to chew on a bully stick, or I get a marrow bone, or I get a new toy, or there's treats. Every time we go to a restaurant, we find a hundred dollar bill in the lobby. We're gonna eat at that restaurant a lot. After a while, you would like to keep on doing this until the dog starts going in the kennel on its own just to hang out. And again, give it a uh, command word, a funny command, like dug out or something like that. Um, the, now we use the kennel to make sure the dog stays safe. He's jumped through windows and we live pr near a pretty busy intersection here in Los Angeles. And so that's not gonna work out very well for him. And we also just don't want him to escape. And the more the dog escapes, the more they're going to escape. So. Um, what we want to do is simultaneously help him prepare for the kennel in a positive way. And once we get to the point where he's kind of hanging out in there and taking naps, then you should probably, we should try putting him in there when we're watching TV um, and ask him to stay for longer and longer periods of time. Now I'm going to pantomime because we actually don't have a kennel here. So I'm going to pretend that this is a kennel and this is the door. That, oh, this is the long way of the kennel. So when I come, when I put the dog in the kennel, a lot of times what I do is I'll throw a treat, the dog goes in and gets the treat, and then I say the command word, and then they walk out. And then I keep on doing that. Um, and basically, until the dog, if the dog has any leaning, or like looks like it's stealing third base, then it's saying it's uncomfortable. So it should be able to walk in there very calmly without any hesitation before you start doing this. So this is probably gonna be like a week or so after you've been tossing and leaving all the stuff in the kennel. So he goes in there, and I very quietly come up and I block him. This is the exit. He's going to get the treat, turn around and come back. Well, he can't get out. Don't let him shove his way past. Just wait. And as soon as he sits, take a step backwards and ask him to come out. And then keep on repeating that process until when you do this and he see, and then, well, before that, after you let him out, the next time toss a treat, let him go get it and let a couple treats without blocking him again. So he doesn't think, oh, now they're going to start blocking me every time. So then basically once he, once you do this and he turns around and sees you and starts sitting right away, then we're going to, the next stage is to ask him to lay down. We're not asking him to sit or asking him to lay down. Sitting is what gets you your freedom. Eventually, laying down is what gets you your freedom. Eventually, laying down plus one second is what gets you your freedom. Then two seconds, then three seconds. When I, my last dog that I kenneled, I used to come home, open the kennel door, go in the bathroom, take a shower, get done, go in my bedroom, change clothes, go in the kitchen, make dinner, sit down and eat dinner and say release, and then she would come out and the door is wide open. So now she's the one keeping herself in the kennel, not the kennel restraining them. I see a lot of people have dogs have separation anxiety, the dog breaks out of the kennel, and the human's default response is, let's get a stronger kennel. The dog's saying, I'm panicked. I can't, I'm not prepared, I'm not, I'm not feeling this. You're forcing me to stay in there longer is gonna make me hate the kennel even more. If you do this properly, the dog should like going in the kennel and feel like the kennel's my safe place. So if you do ever have friends come over with kids and he goes in the kennel, that should be a safe place. Kids are not allowed to interact with him or to entice him to come out. If he goes in his kennel, that's base. So he has a safe place he can go to. We don't have kids in the house, but uh, anyways, uh, once he starts to, to lay down, then you want to start elongating until he can stay in there for up to like five or 10 minutes while you're walking and you're not even blocking anymore. Because you're at, once you get to the point where he's laying down, then you take one step back and then ask him to come. 
And when he lays down, starts laying down faster, then you take two steps backwards. So you don't have to be here blocking it. You're asking, you're kind of training him to do what you want him to do and helping him practice it. And it's just like, oh, last time I was in here for one second after I lay down, now two seconds. It's so progressive, he doesn't even notice that it's happening. And eventually, he gets to the point where he can stay in there for long, long periods of time with the door closed. Then when you actually start closing the door, you want to do this when you're going to be home hanging out. You close the door, and you're sitting here a couple feet away watching TV. And if he, you know, if he whines and whimpers, that means we probably need to practice some of the other steps I've previously talked about. But the idea is you should be able to close the door and have him be completely comfortable. Make sure he has a bully stick or something really good in there while, while this is happening. And then once he lays down, well, in a couple seconds, they come over and let him out, uh, open the gate. Then start elongating that period of time as well. So he has practice being in the kennel first, then in the kennel with uh, not being able to leave the kennel, then in the kennel with the door closed, and my human's right here, then in the kennel when my kitchen, when my uh, guardians are making dinner or fooling around the bedroom or whatever it is. So we're helping him practice being in the kennel without us leaving. Now, while we're doing this, we don't want to put the dog in the kennel and leave and force him to stay in there because that will undo a lot or really set us back. The guardian's doing a great job right now taking him to doggy daycare. It's not a long-term solution, but it is a great short-term solution. He comes home, he's tired, and he can practice. And that would be also a great time for him to practice being in there after being at daycare. He's exhausted. So I would get, um, you could get a little soft padding in there. Sometimes they like hard, uh, hard uh, cool surfaces, especially a place like California. He's got a good coat. So if you might want to get just the piping. They make a little dog bed that'll fit in exactly, and there's a roll around the outside. So, you, you know, it's just, it's made for dog beds. It'll be the exact size. So he might want a softer place to lay on. If he does, then provide it. We already have hardwood floors basically throughout the whole place, so he has plenty of soft places to go. We want to be, it's a good, comfortable place. Um, and then the idea is, like I said, we're helping him practice in the kennel when we're here, then if he's in the kennel when we're in the next room, and or we're in the kitchen, or we're standing outside talking to people, and helping him prepare being in the kennel in a calm way for progressively longer, longer periods of time. But my goal is really not to even need the kennel. I'm gonna use the kennel in the short term because he is breaking out and it's a self-rewarding behavior and the guardians I think would be best served to have that as a stopgap measure. But eventually what we'd like the dog to do is stay calm when we leave. So what I would do is at first just put him in, uh, don't put him in a sit stay, just put him, uh, you know, give him a bully stick or something. Go out the door, close the door, lock the door, and just sit right outside the window so he can see you. And then wait for it and just, and, and a lot of times the first time we'll do it, we just go out the door, lock the door, wait one second, unlock the door and come back inside and sit down. And don't make a big deal out of it. Sit down like nothing happened. Do this when there's commercials on TV. Go out and lock the door and next time I'm gonna be out for five seconds, then 10 seconds. You wanna again, same way we do with the kennel, make it very progressively. So he's out, he's inside while he sees you guys outside. And once you get to the point where you can be outside for a couple minutes and he's no whimpering or whining for him, maybe you need to step outside the gate. And then you step one step to the side, and we actually talked about maintenance, so he might even be able to see out these windows based on what we talked about earlier. But the idea is for him to see, he would be gone for progressively longer periods, longer, longer periods of time, but when he comes back in, nothing bad happened. Don't make, it's okay buddy, you, you made it. No, make it a non-event. And then, and then what you might wanna do is, I actually have a security camera at home. You can get them pretty cheap. I got one about seven years ago on Groupon for 65 bucks. It still works great. So you can actually watch him outside. What normally happens, we put our dog and then we go to a restaurant or a movie and then the dog breaks out and we're across town. Well, if he breaks out and you're right here, he's gonna come right to you. You see where he breaks out so you know what to fix to prevent him from doing that. But we can also watch him on a security camera and we see him. Did he lay down? That's a calm, relaxed state of mind. Is he pacing around the house? Is he chewing on things? That's a nervous habit. A lot of people get mad because their dog seems to have an accident or they chew things up when they're left alone. Well, that's because we didn't prepare him for it, number one, and they are soothing themselves by chewing things or he's trying to break out to come and find you or feel complete by hanging out with us. So the more that we can help the dog practice being alone, at first with a stay just in the house then stay in the kennel, you know, we're doing all these tools to help him feel better and better about himself and feel comfortable. Now, I also spent about two hours going over a whole lot of things that don't seem to be directly related to separation anxiety, like petting the dog on tap whenever the dog demands attention or for no reason whatsoever. So I went through my petting with the purpose of my passive training philosophies so the dog starts to think, I need to earn my affection. I don't get it for free so I feel a boost of self-esteem because I got it myself because I sat down really pretty in front of them instead of I just looked pretty and they gave it to me.
kids who get whatever they want, they become petulant. Dogs that uh, don't, they can also be petulant, but in this case, I think it's more of a case of, because he's a rescue dog, we've been in at least a couple of their homes. And so I, uh, we just wanna make sure that he stays safe. So um, this is a whole lot of little things. Uh, there's also a video I'm gonna go over below that'll be uh, the roadmap to success. Uh, but all these little things add up to big things. So delaying gratification, all these things help him practice being in a calm and balanced state of mind when my humans are not necessarily in my eyesight or in the next room or outside the house or outside the house for progressively longer and longer periods of time. But when you're practicing leaving the house, get the security camera and sit and watch right outside. Sit in your car right outside and watch or drive it around the block. And so when he, so you can watch him and what's he doing inside? If he's pacing and jumping around, you're telling he's telling you he needs more practice. If he comes and lays down here and chill, like we did a good job. And if he does escape, like I said, you know where he escaped from and you can come and grab him and make sure that it doesn't become something too dangerous. All right, well, this is Miles who is engrossed in the bully stick. And so this is a good example of why it works so well in the kennel. And these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that has separation anxiety.